Welcome everyone to our first look here at Celestials versus Infernals here. Theory and parting two aftermath players parting the number one player of every faction in Stormgate, but he has been dominating the ladder in Celestials. This is a best of five and uh, promises to be really cool. So Celestials are awesome because they have the entire map. They don't have a main base. They can do whatever they want. They can take the entire map and uh, also they get a scan. <laughs> we saw it happen right there. It's a single pulse of a pulse of a big area then a slightly slower pulse of a smaller area. And you have this arc ship that allows you to fly around the map. Um, also again, they don't have workers. They have these collector arrays that go down and well, mine from Luminite. They have prisms that give you a little bit of Ethereum. But anyways, we're seeing here very early. We see the scout go down or excuse me, the imp go down to uh, tank for the tech hexen as much as possible that then allows here to go and hexen they have a spell i forget exactly what the skull is called that uh it gives you vision gives you scouting sure but also uh allows you to infest a single target and then when that single target is dead suddenly you have fiends on the map and it's a lot of uh it allows you to go and it, it's not as powerful as gaunts were in, in the elephant patch where you just get gaunts early you get tons of fiends early on but it does allow you to get a couple just a couple gaunts earlier and start to develop things so this looks like a proxy. What are you doing here, Theory? Imps on the map like this. Uh, one of the changes they made in Frigate was that Infernal's got three less workers to start than they previously did. So uh, he wants just to go for run by, but unfortunately the morph core is there. So he's not going to be able to pull that one off. I was going to say, sacrificing an imp this early on, losing this much mining time is a bit of a problem. You, you, know, you, you start with three less workers than you did in the previous batch. Your economy doesn't scale nearly as quickly number one ua uh ua uena uh i guess um if they ask if they have no workers can one even harass them similarly to the other factions and the answer is no actually uh but what you can do so first of all they have the collector raised i i so you get these collector arrays we can see this going down right here that's a thing that that exists as we see the, the the second ability from the top bar it just does damage <laughs> for 45 seconds it's uh excuse you off for quite a while but prisms go on top of the collector arrays and that they increase the efficiency of mine and they increase the money you mine uh on luminite on collector arrays on fabricators for ethereum they actually just mine the ethereum so you can go and you can harass those down uh what you can also do is collector arrays you can force them to lift off these luminite um off the luminite mines and what that means is, well, if they're lifted, they're not mining. Uh, also, again, they're probably a little bit easy. It's a, probably a little bit easier to kill, to totally shut down the mining of a Celestial base than it is, say, uh, a Vanguard base that has Bob overcharged and things. So it does have its pro and cons. Uh, but anyways, we see th Theory here. He went, he got a meat farm. And I guess it is sapping some energy from the energy, uh, from the energy battery, but not really doing much more than that one. So part, parting, he's developed his two bases. He's got collector arrays on the main of the natural and theory for the most part, because parting has opted to play a macro heavy style is not going and getting super or is not uh, afraid to get on the map. One of the issues that exists in infernals right now in the recent play test, and again, this will change. Obviously we're in the middle of things, um, but right now it's very hard for infernals to have map control through the mid game because again, they don't have that ability right they, they uh their economy scales a little bit slower gaunts are a decent bit worse so once the the other two races decide to get out of the map it comes really hard and oh you don't want to lose that hex and so you get them at level zero you get them at the or you get them at the very start uh but you only get one of them and you have to get to tier two you have to get up to the uh, the greater shrine you have to get uh i think it's a no you just get them with a greater shrine for infernals to go and get any more so they're a very powerful unit early on but you only get one of them you can't make any more if you lose it and now we hear the aggression comes from parting but we are going to see some of the argents go down pretty quickly here and while brutes may not be the best against them while well, gaunts are certainly not the best against them getting a bunch of fiends on top can be really powerful and now we're seeing the power of that cascade field we're seeing the power of this arc ship moving forward here parting looking to get his position on the map super quickly and again these energy batteries are important because a they give you energy that's great sure fine uh that allows you of course to build your structures but also they give energy that or they give you power but they also give energy to these argents to give them those empowered shots that does a lot so theory for now he's got his three base going fourth base on the way soon something went down i think it might have been just a link station 
Uh, but Parting here, he's got his double Shroud Stone on the high ground. This does allow him to do a little bit. Now, big surround there on a couple of these Argents. And if he can break this down, that's going to be really nice. So for now, we're seeing some of these energy batteries get taken down, but the Gaunts are starting to fall. And we don't have Shroud Stones on the right side. They're starting to go down here. Sure, Meat Farm, Shroud, defensive structures. But Arc Ships give that high ground vision so the Argents can start to shell away outside barely. Some of them, well, actually, it's not outside of range, but the Shroud Stone just doesn't do enough damage right now. And now we're going to see the Shroudstone made manifest. So this is going to be Parting's attempt to try to break things out. We're going to see the laser cannon go down immediately in the Shroudstone. While it's still empowered, while it's made manifest for the first minute or so of its life, it does a ton of damage. So that's a ton of... That gives you so much room. These Argents are all incredibly low. Brute's coming down to the right side. And this static defense is not allowed to get set up here whatsoever. We see those link stations go up. You turn them into static defense eventually. Or I guess static offense here. But because of this, the animus that's been, been made available, Theory all of a sudden, he's been able to shut that down. He's got Brutes on top. Some of the Argents, they're still here, of course. But Theory's on three bases. He's got these, he's got the Gaunts to start to knock down some of these structures. He's got Fiends that allow him to go and get on top of the Argents. And this pressure from parting for the time being seems like it's held. Not an easy hold. Absolutely not. That high ground vision you get from the Arc Ship. And, you know, Arc Ships are pretty much untouchable. In the early game, they're just really hard to kill. Uh, they have 1,800 HP. Good luck killing. It's flying. You need uh, you need Gaunts or something. Can be hard to deal with, but Parting says, okay, that first attack didn't work, but you spent 50 Animus. You spent a big ability here, especially now that Animus doesn't... You don't you don't generate Animus from killing your enemies. You only generate Animus from your own units that die. Because of that, that's a big cooldown. And now I can go and I can start to rotate onto your third base theory. I can rotate to the right side, get myself set up, that force projection, uh, what's it, force projection matrix, whatever it's called, that goes and slows units around, that heals, or that heals the celestial units. This this setup that Parting has is he probably even stronger, realistically, than what uh, he had in the middle of the map. But also, we will start to see Theory go. He's he's trying to get get some Sim City set up, get some walls set up here. He should have a greater shrine by now. Should have a greater shrine by now. We're gonna have to see. But the tech's not quite there yet. And now with this wall not being done, the, we, we will see the tree start to go in. But parting, or I've talked to Theory about this. And the idea is you do want to leave this one gap so that the, the Kree can kind of filter in one by one, take damage. But even still, the explosions are a pain. Another Shroud Stone's going to get made manifest. And it's important to point out as we see what's happening right now. Uh, it's important to point out uh, what's happening here where every animus he spends keeps him further away from the dragon keeps him further away from this flay dragon that costs 300 animus uh was it 500 animus uh it costs a lot of animus is the point <laughs> i'm forgetting actually how much it is it's very it's oh it's uh 300 300 in terms of luminite ethereum i think it's like 500 animus it's expensive it's a lot it's it is a very expensive thing as we see that again we saw that orbital laser go down a little bit of a bug right there where it's targeting units just out of range so it's not really doing anything it's just showing yeah there we go uh I, albino says 300 animus and 500 500 i could have sworn they nerfed the resource or they that made the resource count a little bit less punishing but uh i guess i'm forgetting as we see walls go down once again theory tries to take this fourth base and really what you're looking to do as the infernal player in this matchup you're looking to buy time to break out this army that this army base building setup that parting has with the Kree everywhere and these Argents and the the link stations that are a little bit of static defense and ever and the energy batteries and everything else they're very hard for a low tech infernal army to be but once you get to hellborns and other things once you start to develop the next level of your tech uh, it can be a little bit more manageable not 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 perfect certainly not not easy should never be easy in an rts but you can start to go and develop tech that's a little bit better uh, that allows you to fight things just a little bit more. So Parting looks like he might get the fourth base up, but again, a lot of pressure on this right side with these Argents perpetually getting their energy back, which means, hey, they can go and they can burst these meat farms down, move a little bit forward. Uh, by the way, pointing out, you saw that there were the two red towers and there's also that grayish tower. The red tower is the Shroud Stone. It's just a standard damage, damaging, it fires a beam, does things as we see. A bunch of imps going flame on, but the Argents, they're going to be able to get away for the time being, trying to knock this static defense down, but there's just more where that came from. But you also have these Wraith Stones that go down. Uh, that's the cracked things. It does 2.5 max HP per second and slow. So it's not this uh, a projectile, but it just slowly withers everything away from it, which is, well, you put two Shroud Stones there and a Wraith Stone, these Kree run-bys go away pretty quickly. So 
For now, though, parting, what does he got? He's got three bases. And he's, okay, I think he's taking the forward collector array. So he's like on four base mining right now, or give or take. We got four base set up for theory as well as he's got that wraith stone being made and now adding in weavers, which allow him to go abduct units and do a percentage of their HP, which is not the most relevant. It's, it's good for Argents to get them to get them into the fight so they do go down. But it's not like they're the heaviest HP units. Again, yeah, there's pressure on the right side, man. This setup from parting is killer. This it's funny we, when we talk about when we watch um uh, when we, we watch TVT sometimes we see these hard pushes coming out of Terrans. It's like ah, it's Brood War Terran. I mean, we're just seeing this right now. So we're seeing the imps go, and they they don't do nearly as much bonus damage against structures like they used to. But actually, you'll notice the weavers do uh, do percent damage to structures as well. So there is that is now again more Therium, more Luminite getting spent just to shut down some of these link stations. Uh, but parting, he has he has the Cascade Fields ready. He can make more. He's got more Bastions on the way. He's got these prime, uh, he's got the prime setup, so he's able to just build units right at the front line. And the question now, the really big question we take a look at is, well, where does Theory go from here? He's got some Weavers out. He's building a couple. He's built like at least one more Hexen to get a little bit more scouting. Hexen. At level at uh, their first level upgrade, they can I think it's actually they, they, they can lay a trap down that does damage over time at level two. They can drop miasma that not only makes in, makes infest happen, but makes infest do like 10 times as much damage. I think it is as uh, unfortunately that weaver will go down and it feels like at this point theory has been doing a decent job of holding on and we're seeing again. The imps are going to explode on top of a lot of this, but it's still that splash damage is a powerful thing. So. A lot of imps will fall, will fall just the same, but we're seeing those traps go down now, right? With the Hexen being made, they make it a little bit harder for the run buys to happen. It slows, it does damage. But again, the important question is, okay, Parting's at 66 supply. Part, or Theory's at 66 supply. Parting's got 92. What are you building into? Certainly losing these Weavers like this is a problem. Weavers can teleport back home. They do have that ability now. Uh, see, a lot of the high-tech units that Vanguard players have, or that, that, it, that uh, Infernal players have, Make that happen. As we can see, we talked about the static defense. Well, at tier two, you can go and turn these link stations or these link nodes, excuse me, into instead of a single target static defense, we can see with a yellow uh, idea on the yellow icon on top, they fire sticky bombs that slow and do damage. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive, certainly, but they, they they can be very, very painful. And we saw that happen right there on top of the Magmadons, on top of some of the fell hogs as well. And yeah, as Joe says, that one one K Ethereum bank disappears very very quickly. Well, that's just how things work. So, for now though, parting he's got a ton of economy here. He's we really st we're really starting to see that in the supply. And I talked to Theory at one point. He was saying, okay, you defend lot you defend on three to four bases for a while. That's what you do, and then you get like four Doombringers and you put thirty two Gaunts inside of them and you start to run around the map and start to try to take these collector arrays down, which is a valid thing. Parting has has had him under so much pressure for the last how far are we into this? Uh last 13 minutes or so. That it's very hard for him to go and buy the time to build that number of gaunts and get those Doombringers out and, and start to be active on the map. So he's he's got his four bases. But there we go. So now we're starting to see the Animancers as well. He, oh uh he tried. Yeah, there we go. We see the storm go down to the high, or the the black hole go down to the high ground, but it's just not going to work out well enough at this point. And with uh, again with the with the manifest there, with the shroudstone manifest, that's a lot of damage done on one on one of these animancers. They're expensive units, and now abducts out of the high ground, dead animancer. There we go. I know people are going to call it a storm because they're coming from a Starcraft background, but I, I think it's it's more like a black hole. I guess is the thing. And in, in my, at least as I see it, it's more of a, it pulls the, he pulls you in, it slows and it does damage, whereas a storm just does damage. But anyway, we can see these, I mean, look at that, right? These, these, these bombs coming out of the warp nodes. I, God, it, it, the cooldown's gotta be, there's gotta be some expenditure, right? That, that's just so painful. That really hurts. And parting, of course, turns on the laser cannon as well. So you're just not allowed to mine out of that Therium setup at all. It, and meanwhile, so this is how Parting is going to try to close this game out. All of a sudden, he's double supply. He's dropping these black holes on top of the imp. Oh, they're dead. Oh, it hurts. And he abducted the wrong Animancer, too. So, yes, we have Weavers that can go and pull things low ground to high ground. Yeah, but all of a sudden, Theory doesn't have a Luminite line. He's lost Ethereum setup. Uh, yeah, it's pain. 
Uh, Porphorian, absolutely. This is the new faction. Uh, we've seen Infernals for a while, but the Celestials, these uh, Quantum Angels. How in the world did that... Oh, I guess Weaver just walked onto the low ground, but it, for some reason, he wasn't able to walk back up onto the high ground. That feels like a bug. Oh, he's back up. Okay, yeah. Seems like he's a little... Oh, okay. He just can't, he can't find positioning behind the... Uh, they can't find positioning behind the Luminite field. That makes sense. As we're going to see... Well, we're, we're going to see that Miasma go down. So that's bonus 10% HP... Or bonus 10x damage from the Infest. But already we're seeing the top bar ability as well. That's a cleanse. That removes any debuffs. It also gives you energy back. So Parting has spent a key to cool down. You get another Miasma going down. Maybe that'll make something happen. Ooh, nice little bit of imp damage there. <laughs> Some of these Animancers are getting pretty low, so that's important. Uh, but yeah, so I think the pathing on the on the cliff walking still a little bit, probably under development, but I think it's important to point out as we take a look at how this is going, how these games go, or how the pace of development has gone, the, even with pathing. The the pace of development on pathing and, and graphics and everything else has been really quick, <laughs> uh, patch over patch. So I'm, I'm not surprised. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see things improve, but for now, the laser cannon goes down, and now look at all these Kree going on top of things. The splash damage is incredible, and I don't know, actually. I, it's hard to tell where the Ethereum has the upgrade that gives them the bonus 10 armor, so effectively, like, an additional 9% damage reduction. But the problem is, I mean, just look at this army out of parting. You're not beating this. Uh, theory at this point, he's down about 150 supply. It's hard for parting to break him, but... Yeah, this is going to be a really difficult setup. Yeah, there's some Hellborn starting to show up, and the splash damage can be really nice, but it's not going to be enough. A uh, parting has the entire map, and we just see, like, just look at how things explode. There's just so much on the map right now that these high-tech units that, that Theory's been able to develop for him, they're getting annihilated. There's just not a lot that they can do. So if you can get a really good Miasma going down, we can see one getting channeled right now, but the Saber one-tap means that they you got to back away from this. The... Yeah, these, um, totally blank on the names of the Hexen are just, they, they cannot sit there. They cannot get those Miasmas down. And, you know, getting Miasma on, getting Miasma, getting a Venom Traps. Ooh, that's a nice little bit of a trap there on an Animancer into the Void. It's going to go down. Uh, but getting Venom Traps and getting Miasmas down on top of a lot of this army, you can kill a lot of stuff quickly. But they, does Parting ever allow that to happen? Yeah, the box on the right, uh, the, if you're, t uh, Kabuki, if you're talking about the Observer UI, this is like level, this is version zero of, of this Observer UI. It will get better. <laughs> it's, uh, not very good. It's, it's not incredible right now, but again, we can expect this to improve pretty significantly in the future. For now, though, Parting's gonna finally make the bust happen. We're gonna see the Miasma start to go down. There we go, after the channel time. But things are just getting burst too quickly. So, at this point, with the Kree on top of everything, the splash damage is there. Harding, he's maxed out as well. He can just build more stuff. The black holes are going down on top of everything. Yeah, this is this is a <laughs> theory held down for as long as he as he could. But there's a reason that uh, Parting has lost exactly eight games on his main account on ladder and probably maybe twelve games overall. Yeah, this is uh, this has it, the balance is probably not quite there, uh, and we're missing tier three certainly. But Celestials versus Infernals has the bones to be a really cool matchup. We're just not quite there yet I don't know if he's tapped out just yet it, it sometimes there's no victory screen uh if you're an observer just yet so figuring out whether the game is over or not um seems like the the brutes are still being micro so I guess he's still about oh look at these black holes everything's gone oh it's a disaster he built a bunch of hellborn as a last ditch attempt but he is very dead in this game uh no the, have we seen the new tier three vanguard unit in use no it's not in the build so this is on the the frigate build that was played like about a month ago. Yeah, so Theory is still moving units. So I assumed that after the, the base was broken. Okay, he was, he's was he got the dragon now. So we got the 300 Animus, 500, 500 unit that goes highest single target unit in the game. Pretty sure that's still true. But uh, of course, it means you're, you, we see the, uh, the Infest does a little bit more. It does a lot, but Black Hole's on top of everything. And now the game is over. Theory says, good game, well played. Parting. Takes the game one victory. We're going to move into game two very quickly. Minus 500. No, it's not minus 500, minus 500, Ayogu. It didn't die. Doesn't count. It's okay. I think this, this matchup has a chance to be really cool. By the way, uh, we haven't seen this a lot. This has been done from StarCraft for a while, but we got a four-player map. 
this is a four player map that we're on. I'm forgetting the name of the map at the moment, but this is a four player map showing up. Uh, apparently you can see observer chat. That's cool. Um, but anyway, so parting spawns bottom left, theory spawns upper, uh, spawns north side. Ideally, you want cross spawn as the infernal player. You want to buy a little bit of time to get yourself set up before you're under the, you're getting attacked by things. So we're seeing, unlike game one where we saw theory pulled an imp and took a, took a creep camp very, very quickly. In this case, he's going to go try to get that and, uh, get the fiend down as quick as possible, but this does mean the Hickson's going to take a lot more damage is kind of the important thing. But notice there's a cooldown on the skull. So he casts one, buys a little bit of time, waits a little bit, then takes a second. And that does allow him to go kite away and take this mineral camp. Although the Hexen does take more damage. And again, you want to keep this Hexen alive because you cannot get one until you get to a greater shrine. You cannot get one until uh, tier two. So that's important. But getting these fiends out does means a, he gets a Luminite camp pretty quickly. That that's always going to be really nice to, Power himself up to that three shrine setup you want to get to pretty quickly. Also, fiends are fast. They can scout. That means he can pull the Hexen back home and not have to worry about losing it uh, super quickly into this game. Uh, Churak asks, they don't need to build, build supply. And I assume you're talking about Celestials. And Celestials don't need to build supply. They need to build power. Is uh, the way we look at it. So... Most units, uh, most units or most races in an RTS, they have supply. They say, well, you need to build structures and that allows you to build uh, up to a certain amount of supply of units. Celestials, instead they have power and that allows you to build the structures in the first place. So you could te technically max out on one Bastion, which is the, the three headed uh, structure we're seeing built right now. And I think you could do that. Absolutely. But in this case, you instead have this power resource that allows you to build structures, to build your units, to build, uh, to establish positions on the map, uh, to use your top bar abilities. So if you build too many structures, suddenly you can't use your top bar abilities. You can only build energy batteries at that point. But one of your top bar abilities allows you to turn things off. Um, if you don't have enough energy, you can't use some of the passive abilities. So, uh, of your structures. So things like being able to, your static defense won't work. Your um, you won't be able to, you'll be able to, I think you can still give energy off the energy batteries, but you don't have the healing off the, the, the force projection matrix. You, so instead of having a supply that is needed, uh, you need this power to go and power everything else that allows you to build more stuff. So very, very different. And the, the important thing when I look at this is that you don't have a main base. That's kind of the big thing here. Uh, Celestials don't have a base. The entire map is their base. And it's funny. I remember playing StarCraft with friends and I had some very cheesy friends. They're like, ah, <laughs> I'm taking my base in the upper right because that's where I'm proxying my two racks. But that's not what's happening here. Again, this is very much, you can do whatever you want on the map and it is incumbent on your opponent to figure out where that is. So for now, very aggressive builds coming out of parting as we see him put a Bastion on the low ground. Surely that's going to be designated the prime. And... We see the laser cannon goes down as well. So that means that uh, you can't really punish it. You can't really go and, and contest this setup, which I I think I'd like to see the laser cannon. Uh, I don't know, tied behind tier two, less powerful. Uh, same uptime, but more gaps in the uptime. So instead of lasting for, I think it's like 45 seconds, maybe lasting for 20 seconds, but cutting the cooldown in half too. Just something that allows you to kind of punish and, and contest when uh, the, the creep of, of celestial structure a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it would be, but that's kind of my thought on things. But anyway, now we see three Argents. They're going to take this vision camp very quickly, and the push of the Celestial commences. This is where life gets problematic. Already parting, of course, or theory, of course, he did put a stag defense down, but Shroud Stones don't do a lot of damage. And the interesting thing is, well, he's got a lot of Gaunts. My experience says Gaunts aren't really the best of anything. Uh, they just don't do a lot of damage. So he's going to try to go for them here. He's going to do what he can to get on top of these Argents. Uh, and he, he put them in a corner. They do splash damage. You can maybe knock something. Now we're going to see that Link node get taken down. The she or the energy battery is going to be out of energy for the time being. It looks like, again, we see the laser cannon going down. Um, the weird flying pylon uh, that we see right there, those are the closest thing that Celestials have to workers. They do mine Therium. Uh, and they they augment the power of a collector array to mine more is the is the thing so you mine a base rate on collector arrays and for every uh every prism you have on top of it, you mine more um so they're not really workers they don't build things 
and they're a little bit they're a decent bit beefier than a normal worker would be but they're, they're probably the closest thing and uh, the other thing we should point out as well as we see this arc ship going down the arc ship while it's flying just as a big meat shield it's vision it's a cascade field uh it's got a bunch of hp but when it lands it does damage as well so it's a little bit of a turret it's not a ton of damage but it is it is enough to ward away gaunts and things like that and uh you know good news for theory right now at the very least this the the structure creep is not going to be the easiest thing uh because he does have these shroud stones on the high ground that are unless the unless the arc ship's flying it's very hard to contest them and the arc ship's taken about 50 percent of its hp so it won't last for forever as parting drops the scan says okay here mr infernal player what's your base setup and for right now it's a two base theory parting he's on three collector arrays he's got a decent amount of money to his name maybe he's on even four i'm not sure so his economy is going really good his economy is going very very well and he has this pressure so it, life is a little hard for theory right now uh eventually he's gonna go probably take that third base and you do have a a fourth base you can take that's only illuminate uh very effectively the 12 o'clock base is is theory's base right now it's kind of it's part of this very extended main base that we can see but theory's been able to sneak out on the map with a bunch of gaunts and start to knock down some of these structures but man <laughs> celestial structures are tanky so the gaunts have to just run away they're not going to be able to get the damage that they would like they get damage to a mainframe but they don't take it down uh i do i, I think for how quickly celestial structures go up i think they should be a little bit uh sorry about that lag by the way um I do think they should be a little bit less beefy. I don't know. But yes, uh, Sneaky Snuck says Celestials seem to be able to just pile on the pressure early game. Yeah, that, I think that, that in the, certain, the current state of the design and the build, I think that's very true. Um, I, when I was watching Nina play for like the first round of Frigate, the first week of Frigate, she was just on this map. She was just putting her, parking her arc station in the middle of the map, middle of the map, taking the vision and just really leaning into things. And that's actually important to point out in this map as well. You don't have a lot of Ethereum easily accessible. There are two Ethereum patches in your kind of core bases. And that's eight total Ethereum patches in kind of the edges. The rest of the Ethereum you want, it's in the middle of the map. You got to fight over it. It's not easy. And it's probably the worst for Infernals because they have to build a full shrine to get that. You can have Fabricators coming out from uh, from parting to go and take advantage of it. You have uh, Ethereum... What are they called? Ethereum Miners? I think that the name changed once. Anyway, the... the the structure that a Vanguard player can put down to mine Therium. And it's not as much of an expenditure in terms of resources, in terms of build time, as it is for, for Infernals. But Infernals have to pull put a, pull, a full greater shrine down. That's a lot of money in comparison. So it's a little bit harder to go and establish that position for Infernals compared to, say, Parting that can just fly his Arc ship over, put a couple prisms, and be fine. Uh, this is not a balanced one, by the way, but it is important to point out that life... Theory doesn't scale his economy into this game all that well uh, in terms of in terms of how much Therium he needs. And Infernals are a pretty heavy Therium race. Oh, yeah. Uh, number one, you, uh, Yuena asks, does anyone ever want a game versus Celestials? Well, Parting's number one on the ladder by a significant margin for Celestials. And then the next three players are Infernals. And then there's Theories of, uh, or, or Vanguard, excuse me. And then the next uh, player is Theories Infernals. Vanguard, if there was a race that was OP in the last dust, it kind of was Vanguard. Parting is just really good. <gasps> Parting is just extremely good. So it kind of uh, makes up for a lot. Is now Parting getting ready for the wrap around here, trying to make something happen, moving the Morph Core because Morph Cores can kill the trees, much like M's can, much like Bob's can. So there is that. But the stack defense is already mostly ready. We got a bunch of meat farms. They're going to start to drop their, their fell hogs pretty quickly. Uh, static defense getting set up. So if Theory does have more of a setup, but again, this has no. This has no Luminite. So Theory... Okay, what's he saving for? He's got 700, 700 in the bank. That's a lot of money in the bank that he has not spent. Now, he might be char he might be out of charges, is, is the thing. Uh, of course, the way in... Uh, oh, no, he's saving money probably for the imps. I don't know. Um, but anyway, the way Infernals work as they go... I say, hey, there's going to be a fiend. That's always really nice. Uh, the way they work is you have these production structures and they they have a number of charges each structure can get up to three charges you can go refresh them on a single structure at the cost of some animus uh, it was at one point very broken now it's very expensive but with these flaming imps as well he's able to get on top a lot of the crees are going to go down and of course with the upgrade with the with the speed upgrade 
that the gaunts have this entire army gets wiped on the right side theory still down a lot in supply and massive bank here actually he really needs to spend this money he's able to knock down one of the armies departing but now he, just a bunch of creesh running forward they're beyblades that's what it is they're beyblades yeah parting was number one with infernals on the previous patch he's been number one parting has been number one on every race that he plays he's just built different he's extremely built different but here's part of the problem right so we've seen collector arrays go down to these bases that theory might try to tank i think he would like to go and uh slowly move out on the right side he needs more therium is the thing it's gonna be really hard for him to take the center it's really hard for him to take the center and animances are out i'd love to see party show off the cabal uh, because it's just really cool uh but oh secret base doesn't matter <laughs> i love the idea but there even with the static defense here there are enough kree that they're just gonna knock this all down so at least you can go and get damage done uh we saw actually double sh I'm actually not sure why he went double shrine there because the the shrine is well positioned to mine Ethereum and luminite pretty efficiently but uh you, you just mine the Ethereum faster is what it is he needs that Ethereum injection is the thing I, it's funny i say that but his bank is so big what are you saving for theory that's a really i, I don't know what he's saving for crowley 33 asks uh is celestials the new zerg uh, i think i just saw banelings uh I, I've seen people say they're, they're Zerg, they're Protoss, uh, you know, they're, they're Zildaka, right? Or the, um, the purity of form, purity of function. They, they, they established map control, maybe like a Zerg. Uh, hard to I mean, they don't have a creep or anything like that, but they do have this, this AOE unit that we see where, um, so the Kree go in and by default, oh, that's a massive, oh God. Oh, oh, that choke was it was being used to good effect to, to get splash damage on the Kree to make sure that they didn't get a lot done. And instead, um, Animancers, they they drop the hammer on everything and Oh, it's pain. Zuka! They say thank you so much for the raid. Unfortunately, I don't speak French, but thank you so much for the follow. Thank you so much for the raid there. As it looks like a venom trap went down on a bunch of these Argents, so they are taking some damage over time. There is that going for him. But that choke that was Theory was using to try to uh, feed the Korean. But anyway, Kree by default, they go, they just, they're like zealots. They do an attack, but once they're dead, they kind of flash red for three seconds and do a, and then they explode for 50 damage in an AOE. Once they get their upgrade, they turn in a little Beyblades. They roll forward and then they go. And once they pop out of that, they have a one big AOE attack. And then like, if they're not fighting for a second, I think it's like one second, maybe it's three. They go back into that again. So they're this really powerful run by tool. They do a ton of splash damage. They shred gaunts. Um, is this an actual game? Uh, it is a replay uh, played between parting and theory. I'm not in the client. Uh, unfortunately, the, this is not being played live, but this is a uh, part of the, the assets that were given to a bunch of different creators earlier in the week. And I figured I just cast it live instead of putting it up on YouTube. Um, I have more series. I have a best of seven between parting in Denver and the DACA that I will release at some point whenever Fresh Giant tells me it's okay. But for right now, we don't know. So anyway, double drop, Doombringer. And the entire idea here for parting is he, he makes this happen. Defend as long as possible. Get yourself up to three, four bases. Get everything you can possibly need. And then get this double drop going and start to take down some of those collector arrays. Because we talked about this earlier. Celestials are many things, but for the most part, they're not mobile. The problem is you can go and... Uh, Oh, this is a bunch of flaming imps. He's going to try to blow this up, but he just lifts up, runs away. Oh, what a waste there. Oh, that does not feel good. So, here we just spent a ton of money on these flaming imps, and he's not going to get anything from it. He's not going to be able to blow th blow the correct collector array up. And now we see the damage being done here with the, the laser cannon that just lasts for forever. So, this double drop, and that's expensive, by the way. This is a very expensive setup. Harbingers are not cheap, and they're just... They're forced to hit and run, and now we're going to see a bunch of these scythes get on top, this anti-air thing. The teleport's getting started, but one of these is certainly dead. The other one gets out. Parting got... Parting built so many scythes. <laughs> My goodness. But uh, that was kind of a one-and-done thing, and now that's just not a, a technique that's really available to Theory at this point. He's got a lot of brutes at the front, and they are a much tankier. They got a lot more HP. They got... I, I'm assuming he's got the upgrade on them, so they have 10 more armor, which is about a 9.5% damage reduction or so. 
And then when they die, they spawn into three fiends. So that can be that can be pretty nice. But I mean, if, if this concave that Parting has attacking into this just feels really difficult. So now Parting going to move forward once again. It's a lot of stack defense. There are a decent amount of Hellborn as well as he shoots and backs away. And now we're going to see, well, we're going to see the, the scythes go in. And they do air to ground. So he popped the, the thing that made him invulnerable for just a second. But there's just nothing that kills these the uh, kills the kills the scythes right now. So they're just getting on top of the Hellborn. Sure, a couple are going down, but everything's falling once again. Parting, he's had the map, he's built the composition that he needs, he understands exactly what has to happen. And you know, Theory just not able to build what he needs. Now, granted, 4K 1300 in the bank is a ton. And I don't know whether he just didn't have enough production structures. I don't know exactly. Or he's just not sure what to build. I, I don't know what the answer is, but Theory, he's got a massive bank in this game, and you can't help but wonder that if he had maybe four more Hellborn, if he had uh, four, 4K, I don't even want to do the math on that. Uh, a bunch more Brutes, maybe that would be enough. I don't know. He gets the Dragon out now, but he, it feels like he's always getting the Dragon out just a little bit too little too late. And even as this does a lot of damage, and it's hard to kill the Animancer just channeling that thing down, and it's going to go down. So again, Theory, he's dead. Game two goes to Partick. Now we move into the Bone Zone. It's Boneyard. The map that's been in development for quite a while. One of the first, like, big maps that we saw starting to get developed. One of the, first, again, one of those first big maps. It's, it's been, uh, if, if you played in the in the Steam, the Steam Next Fest, it was available not on ladder, but it was available to go and kind of play in customs. So the interesting thing about this, there are a couple Therian bases or a couple Luminite bases that are on they're, they're very much islands. You you cannot go, uh, you cannot address them from the ground. Uh, and that's again very good for Celestials. Uh so interesting it's gonna be interesting to see how Theory decides to handle this. Once he gets uh Doombringers out, or uh, no, they, they renamed them to Harbingers, which was good. I, I like the Harbinger name better. Anyway, once he gets those out, once he gets those dropships out, then you can address it. But it's very hard for, well, it can be pretty dang hard for parting to deal with otherwise, uh, or for, excuse me, theory to handle otherwise. But again, we're seeing Hexans go take the, the mineral, uh, the mineral or the mineral creep camp in the middle or the Luminite, excuse me, I'll get that eventually. Uh, the Luminite camp in the middle of the map and notice he's taking partings as well, which is actually pretty important to, to point out because one of the ways that we see Celestials play this map quite a bit is they go and they they establish their first two collection arrays and they move their arc ship forward and they just land it on top of that and use the the air they use the turret to go clear the camp and get money so theory is going to benefit from that luminite camp a little bit but more importantly he killed all five spiders he got the money from that and that does in fact mean us so he's going to go and by the way with the I this is actually pretty useful so he's gone Oh, no, Hexen is out of range. We're good. Never mind. There's a bug where if you're just out of range, it'll keep firing. It just doesn't do any damage. I'm sure that'll get fixed for early access. Uh, but triggering that that power, that that triggering that ability early on, is actually kind of impactful. The cooldown is a decent amount of time. And more importantly, he is forcing Parting to spend power that uh, maybe makes him make another energy bank or so. Now, granted, also, Parting wants to do that anyways. But by forcing this out early before Parting was truly ready... Uh, it meant that we didn't see the uh, party's not going to be able to go and take down the the scary deer quite as much. Which is actually really important because parting one of the ways you go for this is that that laser, he uses that laser cannon to develop his economy a little bit more. Uh, and by not being able to do that, it does slow him down just a little bit. So for now, the Hexen are there. We're going to see a couple more fiends were made. I... These were made, okay, so the fiends were made actually from a brute that, that happened, as we're going to see the Hexen try to teleport out, but uh, he is very dead. And Jao James says, uh, using Resurgence, which is Hellborn Resurgence, uh, I think it's called Hellborn. Anyways, that, that's an ability that you can go use to max out the, for like 15 Animus. No, it's more than that, it's more now. Um, you can go use that to go and max out the charges on a structure. So get you can use that to max out charges on, say... A shrine, so you can build a bunch of imps much quicker. And I agree with Jiao, uh, Jiao, uh, Jiao Yo James, where he says, "Okay, I think probably because the economy is slower for infernals right now, it's worth spending the resurgence 
to get imps out, which is very fair, I think. Uh, starting with nine imps instead of 12, or I think that's, that, that, that was the change, is actually a massive deal. Um, the Infernal Economy was nerfed massively. Uh, number one, Yuena asks, is this game balanced to be around having similar collection rates between the races? So uh, cost efficiency, I'd say roughly, but it's kind of hard to tell at this point. To be totally honest, generally, if you mine more, you're probably going to win the game. Um, is going to be the thing, is going to be the story. But, you know, you know, on the flip side, asking if this game is balanced is also a difficult question. Because Celestials, this is the first time we saw them. They, they have some glaring issues. They have some glaring uh, OP issues. There are, there are areas where they are probably a little, probably too strong, too weak. I don't think it's fair to say the game is balanced right now. Um, they're just, it, it's a, it's a play test. Uh, <laughs> Infernals, for example, are tremendously weak. They were very, very strong in Elephant uh, during the, the EGC tournament. They were oh, probably pretty overpowered, but they received a bunch of nerfs. And now they were by far the worst faction. Um, you can kind of look at the, the ladder placement rates and realize that that is true. But again, that's fine because this is a, this is a, this is a test to test out ideas to see how Celestials might interact with the other factions, not necessarily uh, to go and make sure that everything is perfectly balanced. So for now, it uh, looks like we're going to see both Therium setups, uh, orig originally taken by Theory to get a little bit more Therium up, but now it's not going to happen. He's building three Spires. Yeah, uh, Gabaz 4 says, I think the Gaunt, the, the Gaunt change really hurt them. And yeah, that's very true. Gaunts are not good now. They were very good, but now they're maybe too, a little bit too much in the other direction. Uh... I don't know if they, I don't know which hurt him more though, whether it was the gaunt change or the big eco nerf. Because it was a significant economic nerf. And that uh, slows down the, the infernal economy quite a bit. Makes it between that and the gaunt nerf, it makes it very hard for infernals to be out on the map at all. But I'm very curious to see where Theory is going with this. So for now, the first thing we should point out here, this map is very hard to deal with Kree spam. We can see Theory went, he took the the 12 o'clock base, he had his main base. It's actually pretty hard to hold the, the base that's due south of the main, if we look at where Theory is, uh, because you can see arc ships run across and just put up a bunch of link nodes and its energy batteries. It's very hard to hold the low ground, high ground like that. Uh, where is the game timer? Crowley333 asks. Not in this version of the observer mode. They they went and they kind of cobbled it together as quickly as possible, just to make it work. But this is this is far from the final observer mode. But anyway, uh, talking about this setup, it looks like it's going to be a mass Spriggan idea coming out of Theory, and I don't hate it, actually. He's got a ton of stuff that doesn't suit shoot up, so yeah, with the Spriggans out here like this, we're going to see slowly but steadily, we're going to see all of these, uh, the Kree go down. But it does, the third base was canceled. So anyway, we're talking about this base. Taking this base right here is really hard. Again, just because of uh, the low ground, high ground siege situation the arc ships can go. On the flip side... That other base is just extremely wide open. So it can be hard to deal with the Kree spam. But you got a bunch of Spriggans on the map like this. He's going to clean up everything. Now, again, uh, the Kree are going to explode that imp. And actually, Parting Steel... Oh, no. We don't see it on the map, unfortunately. Parting steals the... Parting steals the scary deer. Uh, Rektawat says they, know they they never make the other rifle unit. If you're talking about the Argents, uh, Parting's actually been playing pretty Argent heavy the last two games. Just not this one. And now, uh, we can see, by the way, Vectors do a lot of damage against Spriggans. Spriggans are just not the tankiest of units, so one flies across, Vectors are out, and, uh, you know, forcing Parting into Vectors feels really scary because, well, uh, Art... Parting is very good at the blink units, <laughs> so uh, I don't know how I feel about that one. But anyway, Kree should be able to knock this base down once again. There were a lot more Spriggans than this. I don't know what they are. Um, I think that's probably for harassment play, something like that. Um, I'm not sure where they are, though. Maybe they're taking... They might. I guess they may be on the bottom side taking structures. The problem with the going mass Spriggan, by the way, is killing the collector array is really hard. They're very tanky. And with the, the laser cannon that you get, uh, you trigger that for 45 seconds, and Spriggans are just not tanky at all, as we can see happening right here. So it's just kind of a pain overall. Now, granted, Spriggans do apply a debuff when they attack that slows down production time. 
also slows down attack time. So if you can get them on top, they theoretically are good against the, the vectors because again, they slow down their, their attack burst. Boy, that's a, that's a very, very much a theoretical thing because oof, it's a lot of dead Spriggans. Clark's, uh, Clark Kent is what I assume your name is going for. Thank you so much for the follow and old Ricker as well. I'm glad you're all are here as we, we take our first look as well, our first public look at what celestial and infernal might look at. Of course, this is game three. This is game three of the setup and theory has two bases. He's got supply parity for the most part, but he just doesn't really seem to have a good way to deal with these vectors right now. There are Spriggans, yeah, but Spriggans just don't do a lot of damage. And Vectors are really fast, so... And they do a lot of damage. It's one of those things where if you have overwhelming numbers of Spriggans, maybe it works, but man, Vector spam is just... <laughs> Party is really good at it, but even so, Vectors are starting to go down. The white health is a thing. Uh, so we're going to see the Spriggans probably go back to their Shroud and eventually go to make... Oh, Party oversteps his way up a little bit too far forward. And again, the Spriggan dot... The Spriggan... Uh, effect does make these vectors fire just a little bit slower so theory is doing a decent job of forcing things back and i, I kind of like I, I don't know that i like his position because the economy is still horrible uh all things considered but the spriggans are really nice so Parting. Are you still staying on vectors? The mass mainframe tech? Is that what you're going to do? Uh, Lazy Topin asks, sorry, just came back. How does the celestial supply work? Is it 300 of the max? Yes. So you don't have a uh, temporary supply kit. You don't have supply buildings as uh, as celestials. Instead, you have power. And notice Parting's maxed out 140, 140 on power, which means he can't build any more buildings. Uh, in fact, he can't cast any of his abilities either. Although that cap might be because all of his ability or some of his abilities are on cooldown. You need power to build structures that are not energy batteries. You need power to, to cast your top bar abilities. This is the way this works. So instead of needing supply, you need power. You, you need structures to get supply. You need structures to get power so you can build more structures to actually produce things. Is, is really how you want to is really how that one works out. So a very different way of I mean everything about infernals is is very different. Is very very different and by the way it's funny seeing parting is just tweeting that tweeting up a storm about about celestials he's like ah if you like protoss you'll like this this is better than protoss um which is funny i, mean, I, I don't even like aesthetically it's obviously pretty similar to protoss you know space space angels but it i think it plays a decent a bit differently although any any faction that has a blink is parting parting makes makes parting very very happy And by the way, we should point out as uh, we're getting into this, if you like this, by the way, you want more Stormgate content as it's available, you want StarCraft content, uh, please go and follow my follow me on Twitch. Go follow go uh, hit the sub button on YouTube because this is going to be open to everyone. Early access is July 30th, about seven weeks away. Early access if you buy a Founders Package, July 30th. Otherwise, it's August 17th. That's a big deal now. Vectors dive on top of everything. Kree as well, but the Kree don't do anything. There are a bunch of Spriggans in the sky. It's all about the Vectors here. And the imps have been pulled away for the time being. So three are starting to slowly get whittled down. The Spriggans in the sky are doing a pretty solid job. Flaming imps trying to get on top. And they just, there's no way they get on top. The blink away, they're safe. And that is so much money that Pertheri just spent to make this defense happen. He's got a ton of Therium in the bank. 1,500 Therium in the bank. But not a lot of Lumini at the moment. The bank's not there. So spending all that money on those imps, he had to go rebuild them. I, I assume spending some animus maybe even to get him back. But this this Spriggan flock seems actually be to be a really nice answer to a lot of what we're seeing Parting do. Not everything, of course. But a lot of what he's doing. So now how does Parting decide to respond? Does he stay on the vector? Th oh, he's got Animancers out. Okay. And Animancers, it's funny. I look at them and I don't... Oh, the range on... Th this range is insane. <laughs> the, uh, the the fact that he can... I don't think he had high ground vision. The fact that you can cast that spell with no vision up to the high ground and at that range... Hmm, hmm, 
I'm not balance whining. I'm not balance whining. We're, it's, it's a play test. We're not balance whining here, but, uh, hmm. I feel like you should, uh, you have to commit those animancers just a little bit more. All I'm saying, that range is kind of crazy. But more armies, of course, coming in from party. It's 26. Like, look at this. It's like, wow, this. Oh, wait, does that do damage to air? I could have sworn it only did damage to ground, but I, I don't know why. I don't know why I thought that. I played against it. I've lost Spriggans to it. But anyways here, this is, uh, those black holes are just disgusting. <laughs> party should be able to break through this with, not, if not this wave, then the next one. Uh, those black holes are just shredding things. And without Weavers, yes, this is a channeled ability, but damage doesn't stop the channel. Only a stun stops the channel so yeah you just got to target him down burst that down and well uh 80 supply to 147 parting did lose a decent amount towards the end of that fight but it is far worse for, it's far worse for there than parting and oh yeah by the way it's important about it i call them black holes it's not a stun though not like dota but it is a slow and a lot of damage and it it's channeled and it lasts for so long it, it is uh this is very strong, is all I'm saying. Is now we see, by the way, Weavers have two lashes now. They have an aggressive lash and a defensive lash. And again, we're seeing just, oh, these black holes are doing so much here. And if the lash is not available, it means you can't cancel the stuns. Yes, there are, again, those defensive lashes. Those are really nice. But the damage here is just overwhelming. Parting, he's taking the map. He's teched up to these Animancers. And, it, and now he's going to blink up on the high ground. And by the way, he's got the upgrade. So instead of only just taking double damage... Um, that, well, that's not a ton of damage, right? Uh, even still, or sorry, they do bonus damage. They take bonus damage, but they also do bonus damage. So they blink forward. So parting, still finding his way forward. Sorry, I had to respond to something. Um, uh, I am still here. Don't worry about it. Uh, as we see, of course, the Venom Traps, they're going to go down. They do reveal these Kree and they do some damage over time. Uh, all right, we're back and good to go. Sorry about the delay here. Anyways. This attack coming in is really hard to deal with. I see people asking about the Weavers. Weavers have two Lash abilities. They have one that saves their friends and restores white health, if I remember right. And they have one that goes and aggressively lashes enemies in and does a percentage of damage. They have double utility right there, but uh, that does allow a little bit. That does allow uh, some value. But anyways, Parting, he has the majority of the map at this point. And that is, again, that is really hard uh, for Parting. For, theory to deal with yes he does have three luminite setups he does have that very well developed theorem instead of at this point on the bottom side but i mean just look at how many collector arrays exist it is i party, party has so much money um now he doesn't have a lot of luminite he is spending that but he's got a ton of theorem he's 300 power as well he's massively 227 versus 57 supply what we're gonna see him wait to do here because he this map is so big that it's really hard to go and push your buildings forward like we saw in game number one it's really hard to see him push forward like this so instead he's gonna have to wait a little bit for the anime for the all the energy to pop up then he's gonna go again and we saw all this static defense on the right side where theory's been getting himself set up but there are more ways to get in the main base than one so he's gonna show up again we're gonna see the black holes so these imps can't even really get through is the thing that I, this is actually look at this he's just zoning areas out it's a slow it's just damage and that means that, say, the rest of the army is going to struggle to get through that area. Any sort of flaming imps are going to struggle to move through, and we will see the Greater Shrine go down. And by the way, there's the cleanse as well. So any sort of infest that may have been added in from the Venom, um, from the Venom Traps or anything else, that's going to go down. Miasmus here, and uh, Theory does identify that that ability is on cooldown for a while, so he can make power, make use of this infest. But unfortunately, he just doesn't have enough to really take advantage of it. He doesn't have damage, and again... We're going to see these channel black holes do so much here. The imps, they can't even get through even as they burn. So, yeah, maybe some of these Argents go down. But at this point, Theory is incredibly dead. Parting winning a final right side as well is uh, that's the thing. And there we go. It's going to be a 3-0 for Parting once again because he's just that good. He's just too good.